Hello, everyone. I am here with John Loomer, who started John Loomer Digital in the fall of 2011 with the goal of helping other businesses maximize social media that makes a difference. In a little over 17 months, John built a profitable self-branded business around a website that generated over 4 million page views. In January of 2013, JohnLoomer.com was recognized as one of Social Media Examiner's top 10 social media blogs of 2013. It is simply the most complete online resource of advanced Facebook marketing tips and tutorials, and it's updated on nearly a daily basis. And I can give you a personal recommendation that from our team at Magnificent Marketing that we have uh, learned a great, great deal from John on a weekly basis, and I uh, can't give him a more ringing endorsement. He is the best in the business. And today we are here to talk about creative targeting with website custom audiences. John, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, Dave. How are you doing? Doing good, doing good. I always get jazzed when we get to uh, talk about this stuff. Um, as we were talking about right before, uh, I believe marketing is about two things, putting the right message in front of the right people, and you help all of us put that second part of the equation into action, and I'm excited to continue to learn from you here today. So, um, yeah, it's fun. How's how's everything going with you? Good, good. I mean, you know, those who, like you who know me know this is my busy time. It's you know, business obviously is good, but uh, baseball is pretty much what drives my my life right now. With three boys all playing baseball, and we're just getting into gear, so it's a pretty fun time for me. What are the ages of the boys again? They're turning 8, 12, and 15 here within the next couple months. Man, you are going to be on the diamonds for the next year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know, Hopefully I, more. Have been, I have been for the last 10, and uh, but, you know, now I'm, I'm coaching just my middle son. I started a team for him, and that's that's just been a blast. I'm a lot of fun with it. Cool, cool. Well, you can definitely need to keep us updated on that stuff. Um, but to uh, dig into website custom audiences. So before yep. we get into creative targeting, I want to first just let the listeners have you explain what a website custom audience is. Sure. So first of all, just the term custom audience people may be familiar with, um, especially on like an email custom audience. So it's basically a list of customers or people who are who are connected to you in some way that you are then allowed to target with an ad on Facebook. So instead of guessing with trying to tell Facebook, you know, go ahead and target people who may have an interest in this and that or are this age and live in this country, it's more like these are people who already know who I am. They've bought from me before. Uh, they subscribed to something, et cetera. But the website custom audience, the difference is um, these are people who have visited my website. Or you could target people based on a very specific page of your website that they visited or a section of your website or a family of pages or however you want to do it, and based on durations. So it could be – I could target someone, you just visit my website today. Uh, there's a special message just for those people who visit my website within the last 24 hours. Or you could target people who visit your website over the last 180 days. So this is all done with a, a Facebook pixel. Um, and then so that's a snippet of code that's on every page of your website. Uh, so then, Facebook, so every time a page of your website is fired, Facebook is notified. So they are then able to generate audiences based on rules that you create. So I could create um, rules based saying anyone who visits this one page, create, you know, this is a new audience. So then I can then target those people and add. So it's really my favorite gotcha. um, form of targeting for Facebook. I just I don't think it gets any better. Yeah, no, and I agree. I agree. I, I, I love the targeting. Well. Uh, yeah, I, I love it the most. And in the second area, I love you know if you have a targeted email list um, to build audiences around, and, and that's basically what you're saying. Custom audiences can be built from like email lists, but the big difference between and what we're going to be discussing today is website custom audiences, which are based on literal traffic that's coming to different parts of your website, and we can build audiences based on that. Is that correct? Correct, and and I'll say okay. this about email custom audiences. I, I prefer the website custom audience over the email for a couple of reasons. I mean, the the email custom audience, first of all, matches up, as we know, if you try to upload one into Facebook and create an audience out of it, because then they take the email addresses and, and match them up to Facebook users uh, about 50% of the time. So it's not a 100% match. You're not going to be able to target all, all of your um, subscribers or customers. 
Um, whereas with the, the pixel, it's going to be, you know, pretty darn close to 100%. Um, but additionally, with the website custom audience, it's based on duration. So look, if you have a brand new business, targeting people who are new customers or whatever, those are going to be valuable. But if you have a business like like mine, for example, that, you know, I've got people on my email list have been there for four years, some of those people aren't that valuable anymore. So, like with a website custom audience, this is all recent. These are people who have visited my website yeah. very, very recently, and so are very, very valuable. In addition, I can pretty much um, do, uh, replicate what you do with an email custom audience by creating a website custom audience for the thank you page after someone has, has bought something or opted in. So, can, so here's an audience of people who have become customers, um, and I'm not doing it by email address anymore. I'm doing it with a website custom audience. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's awesome. And a couple more questions on that. Uh, to build, to be added to a specific website custom audience, do they have to come directly from Facebook to your site via an ad or a link click? No, or do it doesn't they just matter have to where, be logged in? Okay. Yeah, it doesn't matter where they come from. Okay. Uh, they, they could come from Google. They, they could come from a direct link. They could come, come from an email from you. Um, either, either way, you know, when, when they fire that pixel, um, Facebook knows it and then can add that person. So when when they return to Facebook logged in, uh, okay. you can then serve them an ad. Okay, just even better. And one last question in regards um, to just understand how everybody understand website custom audiences. How big does a website custom audience need to get to before it can be used for targeting or retargeting? Well, honestly, I mean, it depends on what you're going to do with it. Because first of all, Facebook won't report the number until it's over 20. Um, but based on my experience, it still works if it's less than 20 people. Um, okay. That so small said, but it can be very small. That said, should you use an audience of 20, 50, 100 people who have visited any page of your website um, to sell them something, or you know, so, and, and 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 are you optimizing for a conversion? Like those are the kind of things that. Don't, won't make much sense with a really, really small audience. So, but that said, I do things with very small audiences. So, I and I wrote a blog post on this on um, Evergreen Campaigns and, and the way I create an Evergreen Campaign is with various website custom audiences. Um, so, an example of how I would use this is anyone who subscribed to um, this this particular email list. Um, and again, this is by by going to the thank you page, so there's a website custom audience, so thank, you know, thank you for your subscription, immediately fell into this uh, Facebook campaign. So for the first four days, they'd be shown one ad, and the next four days, they'd be shown another ad, and the next four days. So I'm basically I'm trying to get them to sign up for my membership, understanding that in order to be added to this audience, you needed to subscribe to this PDF, or whatever it was, during the last four days, so that's a very, very small audience. Mm -hmm. But understand it's also an extremely relevant group of people, too, because they subscribe to mm -hmm. something. And mm -hmm. But I also understand, though, in that case, the bidding matters. I mean, we don't need to get too much in the weeds on that. But when you optimize, have Facebook optimizer and only show it to a small percentage of the people, well, I want everyone to be equal. So it's maybe an audience of 100, 200 people. So I'm going to try to make sure I hit all of them. Um, so there mm -hmm. things like that you just have to consider. I mean, um, Yes, it helps. So whenever I talk to some of these one-on-ones every week, and my first question is always, how much traffic do you get? Because if you don't get much traffic now, that should be one of your priorities is build up that audience so you have this large custom audience that you can go after to promote new content, to promote that, that new opt-in, to promote that new product. Um, because, you know, I've got hundreds of thousands of people I can target with with all the the latest content that I have, um, because I've built up that website custom audience. Yeah, yeah, and you know you um, you definitely you skipped to one of the things I really was wanting to dig into. It's it's a fairly new deal, I believe, at least from us trying it out on our end and learning from you about it and seeing you. We actually were informed about it from following you. Are the evergreen campaigns, and, and I think a good way for people to understand this, it's like it's like an email drip campaign, but through Facebook, would that be a right. like a one, two, three, four, five step process? Would you would you uh, 
agree that that's a good way to kind of describe it for people to understand what what we mean by evergreen campaigns on Facebook? Yeah, it absolutely is. And to be clear, it's not something where it's like Facebook created this tool called Evergreen Campaign. And so I don't want anyone searching around Facebook trying to, you know, find this feature. It's not a feature. It's a matter okay. of taking what Facebook uh, – taking the tools that Facebook provides and doing creative mm-hmm. things with them. So gotcha. all, all, all I'm doing in that case is, like, understanding how valuable these website custom audiences are and knowing that, oh, we've got these durations – so I can I can yeah it's a drip campaign that's a, so so we could do the exact same thing on email as we're doing on Facebook so mm-hmm. someone opts in for for this uh, PDF this free PDF of yours uh, they're probably going to immediately fall into this campaign this email campaign where they're going to get a, a different message every few days which they may or may not open click whatever um, and then after after whatever you know 20 days 30 days whatever that campaign will be over. Well, the same thing with, with Facebook if you do it right. And, but you have to use something like website custom audiences where you have durations where you can basically timestamp it. So you visited this one page that you'll never visit again during the last four days. So during that four-day period, you see this ad. And then during the next four-day period, you're going to see the next ad, on and on. Along the way, if they ever convert, do the thing that you want them to do, they'll fall out, you'll, they'll fall out of the campaign so you won't keep targeting them. But mm-hmm. the, the key to the Evergreen campaign is that, you know, I think most advertisers, and I've been guilty of this as well, will find, we'll have this really good audience, like this, this large website custom audience of all website visitors over the last 180 days or whatever. And you just – you have this big campaign running that same group of people for weeks or months on end and eventually you're just wasting your money on them. Yeah. So with the Evergreen campaign, it's based on a duration of when they opted into something. And once it's mm-hmm. been – 12 days, 24 days, 30 days, whatever it is you decide, and they still haven't converted, you stop, you stop sending them ads. So That's a big deal so that I, you're mentioning that. Yeah. Huge deal. Huge deal. Yeah. yeah. And I was and, talking to our team about that, and I was like, hey, I'm personally getting one of our ads, and I've seen it multiple times. This isn't good. You know, like yeah. too many times, I mean. And I was like, guys, we got to – and then all of a sudden, what do you know? We learn about these evergreens from you. <laughs> and I'm right. like, okay, perfect. Yeah, and again, it's one of those things where it's – I think it's, it's really important – that we, we don't always use the tool the way everybody else is using it or the way, like, even the creator of that tool tells you to use it, like Facebook, because that's the, it wasn't necessarily intended to create evergreen campaign. But it's understanding what the need is, of what a problem is. The problem is that, you know, we've got to manage this frequency. The problem is, you know, we, we want to stop wasting our, our money on people after a few weeks. Um, and, and understanding, oh, there actually is a solution. We just have to get creative and, and find our own mm-hmm. solution. Yeah, and, and, and on regard, do you have some best practices, strategies? I remember when we first were learning from you about this, and I don't know if this still stands true as it did two, three, four weeks ago when we were looking into it. Um, you said serve this piece of content and then do this like the about us and then do this yeah. and then do this and then do this. I don't know if things have changed. Um, you're very good about not being a know-it-all in this stuff too. As much <laughs> as you know, you're very good about saying, hey, let's see, right? So right, right. have you seen anything in the last four weeks that um, you can give some specific um, examples of a good one, two, three, four, five-step process? Like, okay, here's a great piece of content. People landed on this page. Then what should people put in order that you've seen to be successful? And if you haven't seen it yet, um, that's fine too. But I was just yeah. curious. So, so basically, first of all, you need some sort of trigger uh, to, to put somebody into this campaign. So that trigger needs to be something that they will only do once because understanding how a website custom audience works, if they come back to that page again, it will restart them in that campaign. So they'll, they'll keep going. And then it tends to be the purpose. They'll remain in that campaign as long as they keep coming to that website or that page. So that's why it's ideal if it's a thank you page for something that they'll only subscribe to once and only see that page one time. Um, so that's mm-hmm. the trigger. You create durations out of that. Uh, so you create a website custom audience for, for, for example, four days, eight days, 12 days, 16 days, as far out as you want, um, knowing that you're also going to then, when you target, okay, the first ones we target people who who convert within the last four days. The next ones we target people who um, Convert within the last eight, excluding those who who convert within the last four, 
on and on and on. Okay, so that, so that's the first thing. I mean, you can do this with some sort of conversion, opt-in, whatever. Um, but additionally, if, you know, you can also go the route of a page, a blog post, but only if it's a page they'll never return to again. So, for example, if you were to do like an altered link, a special link that if they were to come back to your site and they were to find that article again, it would be a different URL. So, for example, if, if, if you used UTM parameters and added it to the end of the URL of the blog post, um, hopefully when they come, if they ever came, came back to that blog post, it wouldn't have those UTM parameters in it. And you create a website custom audience out of the altered URL, if that makes any sense. So, so basically you're hey, introducing does, people to something. Can you, can you touch again on, you kind of mentioned exclusionary, and that was something I was going to dig into later because that's very important here too. First of all, yeah. can you just explain what exclusionary is? I know it kind of yeah. sounds you know, a little self-explanatory, but explain to it how it relates to Facebook. And then if you could, for me personally here, could you explain how it could be used within these evergreen campaigns so that they don't get served the same one possibly? Yeah, so, I mean, really, first of all, with custom audiences, any type of custom audience, you can use them either to target people or exclude people or a combination thereof. You can have multiple okay. custom audiences within the same ad set, one where you're targeting, one you're excluding, et cetera. Um, so that's valuable. A really good example of why that would be valuable. You're promoting a product, uh, a one-time purchase type product. Obviously, you don't want to promote that, waste your money on people who have already bought it. So you're going to exclude anybody who's in that audience of people who have already bought it. Um, but in, in – so in this uh, evergreen campaign, there are two things that you're going to exclude. First of all, assuming this evergreen campaign is created with the ultimate goal of selling a product, if they've already bought it, you don't need to put them through that evergreen campaign. So, so first of all, you'll exclude those people who bought. But the other thing is you can't create a website custom audience, for example, of people who have visited that thank you page uh, during the last eight days but actually during the last five to eight days, for example. But you can create a website custom audience of people who visit during the last eight. You can create one where they visit during the last four, and then you target uh, for anyone who visited during the last eight, excluding anyone who visited the last four. I know that sounds kind of confusing, but that's kind of the way you go about it, to make sure that at, so you, you serve them a different ad in the first four days than you do in the next four days and in the next four days, so you can kind of control that drip. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it is. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's to dig into all this stuff. I mean, this is some higher level stuff now. This isn't for somebody who's just learning about the boost button. Um, but I will say it doesn't take a rocket scientist to be able to eventually figure everything out. But you got to put the you got to put a little elbow grease in there and you got to get right, in there right. and you got to figure this stuff out. It's not, you know, it's just not. Not like just a snap of the fingers, but you know we, you know, we, you know, you know when you get to start digging into this stuff, you are going to want to know the better and bigger and bestest things to do, and that, right, that's right. what this is. So yeah, yeah. Um, and do you have any so, um, good examples on your right. site to show people about Evergreen campaigns, like yeah. some ones that you well, put well, in action? I want to uh, finish answering your question first of all, as far as like the best yeah. practices on that. Um, so the first thing was having the trigger. And the second thing is, you know, making sure you create those various website custom audiences. And a third thing is, is bidding. I, I, got, I was I'm touching this briefly before. By default, you would normally be optimizing for an action. So on Facebook, um, optimize for conversion, for example, which means show it to people within the audience I'm, I'm telling you to target, but only those people within that audience who are most likely to, com to convert. So that may be 10% of that audience, for example. But we don't want that to happen in this evergreen campaign. It's already an audience that could be under 100 people. Um, so we want to show it to everybody. They're all equal as far as we're concerned. So that's when we use um, what I, I like to use in that case, uh, the bidding called daily unique reach, which means um, you, you'll show it to as many people within that audience as possible, but no more than once per day. Um, and then I, I throw a crazy high manual bid on it because I want to make sure I reach all those people if I can. And then I, I, I don't have to be too worried about bidding too much and having frequency go too high because it's daily unique reach. It will only be shown once per day. So that's, that's the next technical side of it. Um, and, by the way, I think I need to update. That's one thing I did learn. Yes, but you know, things that you know, learn, work and don't work. Um, I think within the blog post I, I used a, a $50 
I might have even said that in an automatic bid. Well, I've learned that $50 manual bid sometimes works. I now do a $100 manual bid because I found that sometimes the asset wasn't even running. Um, but again, understanding when you have that high, high, high bid, that doesn't mean that's what you're going to pay. That's just the most you're going to pay to reach people. So I've, I've seen in general, I'm getting a CPM. That it's still a high CPM. It's like $25, $35. But that said, these are extremely valuable people that you're willing to spend more to reach. So, so again, that's more back-end technical stuff. But, it's you know, how whatever you want to do for a drip campaign, but one, one I like to do is first four days, an introduction to who I am. So thank you for, for opting into whatever this is. You may not know a lot about me. Here's my story. And I'll, I have a, an, a, a page, you know, the About Me page that I send them to. And then after that four days, then it's like, um, you know, you, you opted into to this PDF recently. Here are uh, three other, because I'll use a carousel ad. Here are three other articles related to that topic that, that I think you'll enjoy. Because, um, again, I'm not trying to sell them anything yet. I'm just really trying to indoctrinate them into, you know, the value that I can provide them. And then four days later, it may be, I'm trying to remember what I do with this particular campaign, but it may be, um, three other articles that have written on other topics still related to mm -hmm. Facebook advertising. And then I introduce um, my Power Creators Club, my membership. And mm -hmm. um, and then I go through the, so I think this Evergreen campaign was about 30 days. And so I go through the, the process of giving them the benefits and then kind of selling them on it. Um, but it's, it's slow. We build up slowly. And then if they don't buy, they don't sign up, after about a month, they fall out, and I don't target them yeah. anymore. Um, yeah, but one, a, one you're, thing, you're, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was <laughs> going to say, one thing I've learned with that, and I, I think I'd recommend, is that um, really what I could have done and probably should have done is broken that up into two separate Evergreen green campaigns. So you have the first one that you know, is all about introducing to me and uh, providing information on you know, more content and things like that. I introduce the um, uh, membership. And if they don't click on that last one for introducing the membership, they follow the campaign. If they do click on it, I've got a whole new campaign for them that, that tells all about um, the Power Hears Club um, over a series of a couple of weeks. And if they still don't buy, then I stop stop targeting. No big deal. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. Just, you're just you're just doing content marketing 101, but in a very 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 high level. You know, that's just what it is. Just supply helpful, 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 helpful. Then ask for the sale. Helpful, 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 yep. helpful. Ask for the sale. I, I guess Gary Vaynerchuk, what's he say? Jab, 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 right hook. I think it is. Yeah. And, that, yeah. and that's basically what you, what you're doing here. But you're you're doing it on, on an in an automated way. You put all that, do all the heavy lifting up front. Um, you know, and get, make sure you have good content to send them, of course. Um, and then set these up, and then let it let it just roll. Yeah, I mean it's. Uh, I mean, we're super excited about, like, super excited about learning about this. I, I can't. Yeah, it's, you. it's it's a fun thing. I, like, uh, honestly, uh, you know, I, I've been doing something like this for the last, I don't know, six or nine months or so. Um, in particular, I mean, I think uh, an example that people are most familiar with would be something that's what we call um, an abandoned shopping cart. Like, you visited a landing page for something, you didn't buy it. Um, now, now let me show you a series of ads. Uh, to try to get you to buy it. Um, so I've been doing that for a long time, did really, really well. But then I started thinking about, well, we could extend this and, and make it a lot more powerful. So I, I've been you know, definitely doing other things. Just, just like everybody else, I feel like I, you know, I've been wasting money hitting the same people, the same ads, same type of ads, and we don't need to be doing that. So yeah. um, I, I definitely think there are lots of opportunities for this. Absolutely. Now, now to dig into some other things, and you may, you know, some of this stuff may be redundant with kind of what you've said, but we, just to kind of highlight it is to talking about, uh, and you did touch on landing on like on a specific page is a good way to get going with these, like a like a, uh, a shopping cart abandoned type page. Uh, but also, if you can uh, talk about interest. And then engagement, you know, if people showed interest in a specific type of content, maybe talk about some strategies there, and then we'll uh, dig into something I think I just saw you put a post about today, which is engagement um, uh, when people viewed, you know, videos for a certain amount of time. So, but yeah, if you could talk about interest and then engagement, that'd be great. 
When you refer to interest, are you just talking generally about the word interest, showing interest in your content, or are you talking about using interest in terms of you got the interest targeting within Facebook? Well, both, I guess. I mean, I, I uh, you know, we were as a team, we're talking about some questions to come up with, and, and this came up. So I don't even know if you can do that second part where people just have, you know, by targeting via interest or if they just showed interest in a specific type of content. So my question is, I mean, yeah. obviously, I, I don't know if you can do both, but my <laughs> question is both. Well, I mean, look, my preference is always to, to use a website custom audience, and I think that's what we're talking about today. So I just, I think we'll stay on that yes. topic. So, so yes. the way I interpret that re related to a website custom audience is that, look, if I can create a website custom audience out of, um, of, of fa out of a family of pages on my website, and what I mean okay. by that is, yeah. let's say, for example, th that your the URL structure of your site is broken down. It includes the category within the URL. So, and so I know like a lot of people might have an issue where their website covers many different types of topics and you don't necessarily want to lump everybody together. So let's say, you know, your website talks about politics and current events and world events and whatever. Um, and you want to focus just on people who visit pages of your site related to politics. So let's assume that the category politics is within the URL. So you create a website custom audience uh, of any page where the URL includes politics. Uh, so then that wouldn't be just one page, it would be multiple pages. Um, even if you don't include the category within the URL, uh, first of all, you might have um, the within the main menu of your site, the individual categories where people click on those a lot. And so you can create website custom audiences off of those pages. But additionally, anyone who's you know somewhat know, knows what they're doing with with SEO knows that you've got to put the the main topic within that URL somewhere, just like it's within the the title. So if it's a topic that's covered often, uh, so like even with politics, whether it's Republican, Democrat, some, something like that, Trump obviously, mm -hmm. um, you can create a website custom audience out of that because you know that that one term, that one word, is going to show up in lots of URLs across your site. So then you can kind of lump any, those people together around a common interest of having read that type, that type of content before so that you can know, you can feel confident then you read this before. You'd probably be also interested in reading this, this content or downloading this related ebook or buying this mm -hmm. related product as opposed yeah. to guessing, well, you know, you visit this, you visit my website, I don't know what exactly yeah. exactly you read. This may not be related to you at all. So. Yeah, no, it makes complete sense. So, like, you know, you have men's fashion and women's fashion. They're on the yeah. men's fashion. So you do that. Now, so you can do multiple URLs to build these custom audiences, then, it sounds like. No, absolutely. Right. And, and and I think the key there, too, is, yep, absolutely, you can do multiple URLs, but you can also, it's a, your URL includes. It's either URL equals or URL includes. So if you do URL includes, you're not putting necessarily an entire URL in there. You're putting one portion of the URL that you may find in multiple URLs. Gotcha. So, gotcha. so it could be, for example, a category that would appear in multiple URLs. So, gotcha. so it wouldn't then just create a website custom audience of people visiting a single page. It could be a whole bunch of different pages that all have that those those characters, that word, whatever, within the URL. Good point. Great point. Thank you for that. Um, what about engagement? You, I literally saw something come across <laughs> my email today. Yeah, Talk so, about that. That was that. Was, you you seem pretty jazzed about that. Let, let's let's, well, let's dig into that. Yeah, it's kind of a roller coaster of emotions because <clears throat> it. Um, I thought it was one thing. It isn't quite that yet, but it sure looks like that's where Facebook is going. So this is something, something I just stumbled upon last night. A new feature within it's both Power Editor and and Ads Manager within Audiences. You go to click. I, I was actually in the process of creating a new website custom audience click create audience and now there's this fourth option for engagement on Facebook, which is something I have been begging Facebook about. I'm not going to take any credit to say that that's, that's why they're doing this, but I've been begging them to do this, um, at least what I thought they were doing. Um, so you, you, you go into that and at the moment, um, what this is for is creating various custom audiences out of video engagement, so engagement with your videos. Now, there was something already similar in place where Facebook automatically generated two different 
video views audiences based on whether they viewed three seconds of your video or 95% of your video, but there was no flexibility with that. You could only, it was automatically generated. You couldn't alter the duration. There were only two different ones you could create. It was based on one specific video only. So at the moment, what this is, is you've got six different options based on the level of engagement with your video you can create. So if someone viewed a video, they watched it, watched 50% of it, you can create an audience of those people so then to the remarket to them with another ad later. But additionally, you can say, it's not just for this one video, it's for these 10 videos. So they watched any of these videos for 50%, let's create an audience out of that. Or you can actually mix and match um, durations with, uh, with uh, how long they watched it, uh, depending on the video, things like that. You get really complicated. But I think that the biggest thing, um, kind of like with website custom audiences, is I can now create an audience of people who viewed my video today or within the last three days or five days or whatever it is. Before, we didn't have that flexibility. So you can, like when we talked about um, evergreen campaigns, that now becomes an option with a video. So mm -hmm. maybe you show, you show a video that they'll never see again. They watch it. It introduces them to something. They watch it. They watch 95% of it. Um, then that they fall into this new evergreen campaign. So you watch this video, great. Let me show you the next series of this video or whatever it is. Um, so, because you can also exclude people, remember? So, okay, let's mm -hmm. exclude anyone. So from that first campaign, they no longer need to see that first campaign. Let's show them the next video. And then they watch that video, let's show them the next video. So really powerful stuff. Um, but like I, like I was saying, it's not quite what I was expecting based on the title of engagement on Facebook custom audiences. When I see that, I get really excited. And the fact that there's not video in that name anywhere. And when you're creating the audience, it says content type. Doesn't even say it has to be video. It's just that's the only op those are the only options that come up right. So you think I, it's I just, change. You're just saying right now that's what they have. I think more is coming. Right. So yeah. let's let's create an audience of people who have liked this post or liked any post or commented on this post or commented on any post or shared this post or shared any post or liked my page during the last, and this has been one of the big ones for me. Like page likes are okay. Um, I think the more mature your page gets, the less valuable they become, just like an email list. And I think a lot of people mm -hmm. like to blame Facebook and say, I don't reach anybody anymore. About that. Well, let's think about it. Just like an email list, if you don't call your email list and, and cut people out who aren't active anymore, it's just gonna get less and less effective. So like with your Facebook page, you got people who have been fans for four years, five years, they don't even care about you anymore. It's not going to be as effective. But if you could create an ad starting your fans who just liked your page within the last week, say, hey, welcome. Welcome to liking my page. And here's some, some more information about, about all this stuff. <laughs> so this is yep. all pie in the sky. I think this is coming based on, you know, some, some clues here from Facebook. Um, not to mention there are very few people who seem to have this engagement on Facebook options. So I feel like I'm like, you know, t t uh, I was telling a secret that no, that no one else can even prove that it exists, but uh, <laughs> there have been a few people that have it. So it's not clear if this is a test, if it's the very beginning of a rollout. And it, we've even seen like leaked code before where it, it wasn't ready yet and, you know, someone saw it. But uh, it, I think this is intentional. I think it's very early, whether it's a test or a slow rollout, but Definitely some really, really exciting possibilities with it. Just another reason to stay on uh, in John Loomer's radar, everybody. <laughs> you'll you'll know stuff before everybody else does. Well, well hey, man, I think hey, we've I'm, learned. I'm not, I'm not I'm not always the one with the, the stuff at the beginning, so I feel really, really lucky. I, I, I can't stand it when oh, other people on. have something and I don't. I'm telling you, I don't have stuff sometimes. Well, you, know, right. you just have to be lucky sometimes. <laughs> well, you're lucky a lot. Now, uh, to kind of just conclude everything, you know, I think we've given a, a lot of information to digest. Are there any negatives, downside of using website custom audiences? Um, I mean, it depends on, you know, how you define a negative. I mean, so it's like comparing website custom audiences and email custom audiences, for example. Um, there's certainly, like, the benefits I mentioned of a website custom audience. One, I guess, negative is, the limit there is 180 days. 
So if someone, so you you still have to combine. Like if you, if you want to exclude people who have bought a certain product from you that is a couple of years old, you need to combine the email list custom audience with the website custom audience for that exclusion to catch as many of those people as possible. Because you can't do a two-year website custom audience, for example, or back from the beginning of time type of website custom audience. So I think um, you know that's probably the, the biggest weakness um, that I run into. But the, you know there, there are ways of kind of getting around that a little bit by combining it with an email custom audience. This guy, it takes a little bit more work. It sounds like obviously a little bit, but, but it's it's, it's yeah. a process that you should kind of be used to. That you're always going to generate both of those audiences. So when you're excluding, you're going to exclude them both. Um, and you know sometimes a matter of targeting too. You can we can target them both just to uh, make that as a complete complete as an audience as possible. Okay, very cool, very cool. Well, John, hey, why don't you uh, why don't you tell everybody how they can uh, continue to learn from you? Sure, just go to johnloomer.com. That's J O N L O O M E R dot com or John Loomer Digital on Facebook. Uh, you can also find me at John Loomer on Twitter. And if uh, if you are an advanced Facebook marketer and you're interested in joining a, a community of other advanced Facebook marketers for weekly webinars and workshops and all kinds of stuff, um, go to johnloomer.com slash PHC to learn about the Power Hitters Club. All right. Well, thank you very much, John. I personally, again, as always, learned uh, taking notes for myself. I'm going to be running back to our team to talk about them right now. <laughs> and I, I know that everybody else out there learned a, a ton today as well. So I greatly, greatly really appreciate your time and expertise and for sharing everything with us today. Oh, yeah, thank you so much. I appreciate you, Dave, uh, and thanks for having me on the show. Yeah, no problem. Until next time. Thank you.